so the other thing I think that bears uh, acknowledgement here is you had remarkable timing, right? If you started doing burrs yeah. in 2020, 2019, there was probably no better time on the planet, right? You buy something in, in March, it's worth more in July. I mean, it was just a crazy time. Um, I would argue that do, starting doing burrs today, you would not have the same amount of success. Uh, would you, Would that be fair? 100%. Yep. 100%. So, so what, I mean, that's the big, that's my big bugaboo with, with Burr is it's sold as an easy strategy. And in, in reality, it's an advanced strategy. There are so many different parts. You've got to buy it right. You got to repair it right. You've got to run a good book. You've got to get the debt right, whether you're a job. I mean, there's, there's so many places in a market that is going nearly vertical. It's probably one of the best strategies in the world. In a market that's flat, it's going to hurt a lot of people. What do you think? Yeah, no, I agree. And and that's what's, especially in today's market, um, you know, utilizing the burr strategy, no one's burring a property from start to end in a month. And, you know, a lot of things happen four to six months. Yeah. And the economic di- dynamic and what's going on with interest rates and the economy Literally in a glimpse of six months, everything could change. So your ARV in January and what it's going to be in June or July is completely different. And you're 100% right. For me, I was buying properties in June and I would do a cash out refinance. And the, the value was 20, 30, 40 grand over what I even estimated at the time. And it didn't even make sense. And now, now with the interest rates, then you could pull out a little bit more because I was locking in that, you know, three, four percent. Yeah. But at seven and a half percent interest rate, the margin for error is so much smaller to be able to burr. And I a hundred percent agree. I think I think burr is something for someone down the road. Um down the road, once they've done a few deals, house hacks. Um, even I'm an advocate of putting twenty percent down. I think it minimizes a lot of risk. I think it's a good place for capital to go. Um but and to be honest, a lot of people just in the nothing against bigger pockets, but the bigger pockets community, people really aren't talking too much about this burr strategy anymore. I mean, there people are still talking about it, but it's not like this gung ho thing that people are like, you have to burr to be able to scale. Mm. Yeah, again, I think there's timing for everything. I think one of the things I've been in the game for 22 years, things come and go. It's great to have the skill you will have. Burr will have another time in the sun. It's just not today. Uh, but that said, uh, the other thing I really took from your story is um, you flip some, which means I call that chunk money, and you kept some. So is your portfolio today kind of all small residential, you know, singles, du- duplexes, tries, quads, all that? Yeah, everything under four, four units. is I, I own one four unit um, and one three unit and everything, or two three units. Everything is duplexes and singles. I love that portfolio. I mean, if I had to do it all over again, uh, that would probably be the portfolio I build. You get the best financing. It's the most liquid. It's the least amount of headaches. Uh, When I look at my headache factor, you know, my portfolio is 50-50, you know, kind of above that and below the fourplex line. Uh, Gosh, 80 or 90% of my headaches are apartments. And um, yeah, I would definitely, I mean, if I had to design my portfolio and start over again, it would be all fourplexes. Because again, the financing, Uh, is just there, eat most liquidity. So that's, that's really cool. 